What if I told you that you were forced to click on this video? In fact, what if I told you that you have been forced into every single decision that you have ever made? I know this sounds crazy, but bear with me, because if you do, you will see why it is all true. Free will is the ability to freely choose one's own actions. We all feel as if we have free will. When I woke up this morning, I chose to get out of bed. I did choose to do this, right? In order to understand why this is actually wrong, we must first understand the idea of event causation. Event causation is the idea that no physical event can occur without having been caused by a previous physical event. The swing of a bat causes the flight of a ball. The flick of a light switch causes a light to turn on. And the push of a door causes the door to open. None of these events could occur without their preceding events. Now I want you to imagine a dice being rolled. Pause it here. If we could know everything about the dice's rotation, velocity, mass, size and shape, as well as exactly how the force of gravity and friction acts on the dice, due to the event causation, we could determine what number it lands on. It is for this reason that the physical world is deterministic, meaning that all events are caused by past events, such that nothing other than what does occur, could occur. This shouldn't be too hard to grasp, but now we are going to play a game to see how and why determinism also applies to everything we think and decide. Think of a colour, any colour. Once you have your colour, think about why you chose the colour that you chose. Were you able to freely choose the colour that you chose? It is likely that you felt as if you were the one who decided what colour you chose. But if we look closer, we see that other than this feeling that you have, there is no other evidence to support the idea that you were the one who chose the colour that you chose. Every event in your life can be thought of as a ring in a long chain of events, where each event leads to another event. Throughout this chain of events, you have learnt a variety of different colours. The colours that you have not learnt yet had no chance of being picked. Of the colours that you do know, some colours are likely to come to mind more easily due to stronger neural connections in the brain for these colours. These neural connections have been created and strengthened by a combination of many past experiences and events in your life. In addition to this, leading up to my question, you are likely to have experienced many different events that shaped the mindset that you're in right now which would in turn have impacted your answer to my question. As a result, if we were to know every event that influenced you throughout your life, from the synthesis of your genes to the temperature of the room that you're watching this video in, we would be able to accurately predict your next decision. Mental states are brain states, and brain states are biological states, and biological states are physical states meaning that in the same way that determinism applies to the physical world, it can also be applied to our thoughts and decisions. Some people argue that a being propelled by a mind can create new thoughts that are not influenced by past events. But why would we make this assumption? Even if you could find an explanation for what causes these new thoughts to be created, we simply fall back into the idea of determinism because there was a cause. Knowing that every decision in your life is already determined can be daunting, but it doesn't mean that we should just give up because that in itself is an event that will likely have very negative impacts on your future. Instead, take pride in everything that you do because every experience you have will add another ring to your lifelong chain. And as a result, everything you do will directly impact your future. In addition to this, determinism changes our perspective on morality, as people that do bad things are simply the result 
of an unlucky combination of past events that made them into the people they are. An example of this is a murderer. You may think that a murderer has a choice as to whether they kill someone or not. But once again, when we look deeper, we see that this is not so. Let's say a person develops a brain tumour, causing them to become a psychopath and murder another person. Is it their fault that they killed someone? This is an extreme example, but you can think of the brain tumour as the many different life events that turn a person into a murderer. Knowing this, do you still hate murderers, or do you now only fear them? By understanding the nature of determinism, we see that instead of hating people that do bad things, we should instead be focusing on the prevention of these bad things, by influencing these individuals' lives earlier in the causation chain. This does not mean that we should let murderers roam free. We should still lock up people that do bad things because it will create a safer society for everybody. As American philosopher and neuroscientist Sam Harris says it, we would lock up earthquakes and tornadoes if we could. I hope you see now why you were forced to click on this video. I would also be very grateful if your past events led you to like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed. Have a great day.